CycleWorks facility. What is it? In fact, at the CycleWorks is a facility we uh, we set up in Italy, in northern Italy, in close to Milano, and it's a small recycling unit. So maybe for a master batcher, it's it's not usual to have a, its own his own recycling unit, but we. Uh, actually installed it there and not to become a recycler on our own, but to actually do strategic innovation on the recycling process itself. So what we can do there is actually we can replicate the whole industrial mechanical recycling process in a small, let's say, 50 to 100 kilo scale, uh, where we can produce our own specimen. <clears throat> we can uh, produce our own bottles, films, chips, whatever we want to uh, evaluate and then shred them to flakes. We have a industrial scaled down washing equipment where we can replicate the industrial washing conditions like caustic soda, for example, at 80 or 90 degrees. So really put some stress on the polymer, um, washing the flakes, drying the flakes, and then re-extruding that to our self-made PCR. So we can go through a twin screw or single screw extruder. We can apply high vacuum also like the industry is doing to get rid of volatiles and then produce our own PCR. And then uh, with that, we can again produce bottles, films, chips, and we can turn the wheel again and again. Uh, and it's quite a flexible unit to have uh, strategic innovation on the recycling process. We can take samples wherever we would like. Uh, we can also start with flakes from a, from a recycler, for example, just to improve the quality of these flakes. So it's a very versatile uh, R&D unit we have there. Fantastic. So where did the original idea come from? Well, it's, it's all based on the fact that the whole industry is at the moment looking for solutions, how to improve recycling. You know, there's the European Union targets out there uh, giving us clear specifications where the industry has to go in terms of PCR content in packaging. And um, if, you, if you really analyze this, uh, what, what it actually means for the industry and for the components that are used, uh, it means that you need more innovation on the recycling process. And, and of course, if you really want to see the effect of a certain additive mixture, for example, on the recyclability of a, of a uh, plastic recycling, then you need to replicate it as close to reality as possible. Because if you just give this additive to a recycler in a large scale, you will probably lose the, the results somewhere in the, let's say, in the, in the waste that is actually recycled there because it's, it's volume simply too, too high. Um, and, and that was the reason why we said we have to invest into this equipment to be really equipped for the future and and be able to uh, to innovate. Yeah. Excellent. So um, the facility was announced, I think, at the end of two thousand and twenty. Um, so what work has been completed so far? Uh, yeah, it's correct. End of uh, twenty twenty, we we basically uh, uh, kind of kicked off the activity, and it was heavily delayed due to COVID. Unfortunately, we wanted to be actually working much earlier, but you know, everybody I think suffered from the same problem here. Um, and, and officially, we started working then in January last year. Uh, and of course, the, the initial stage was really a, a gaining experience. Huh? So we, we started to replicate the, the recycling protocols from Reciclas, from EPBP, from APR, just to be, first of all, learning our equipment, how to manage it and how to actually uh, interpret the results we, we got. Uh, so that was the first phase. And then the second phase, we immediately really jumped into action and we wanted to understand what is actually the effect of our standard additives and colorants, which we are selling uh, on, on recycling, on the recyclability, because we wanted to make sure that whatever we give to our customers, even from the standard portfolio, is not destroying recyclability. So we, we had a broad screening on that one. And then from this, we, we actually continued and said, okay, now we see uh, certain additives have a a rather positive effect, antioxidants, for example, which is quite obvious. But can we actually improve on the on the uh, on this effect? Um, and 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 that's actually possible. So we found new additive mixtures which actually protect the polymer uh, from the beginning on in the long run in the recycling process. Because you have to imagine, you know, at the moment the protocols we have in the industry are just one cycle. You know, if you go for Reciclas, they check recyclability one cycle. But that's not the full target because we want to keep the polymer in the loop and have it recycled again and again. And what happens if you accumulate, let's say, degraded polymer in the process and if you increase the PCR ratio in the packaging? So that would mean um, uh, over quite some time, but after maybe a year, you would accumulate very much um, a, a lot of material which is not in a good quality anymore. And that will be in a large content in the bottle, up to 25 to 50 percent. Um, and that would actually destroy recyclability on the long run. 
Um, so for us, it's very important to go for this design of uh, design for recycling concept, meaning trying to protect the polymer and keep it stable in the process as long as possible. Okay, interesting. And um, what have you what have you learned so far? <clears throat> um, I think <clears throat> one of the bigger learnings is actually that you have two type of solutions you can offer for this market. And I like to speak about aspirin and vitamin for plastics. Uh, so, so the one is the aspirin, which is just taking away maybe the headache of a of a converter, which has to deal with a low quality PCR and still has to make a good bottle. So I think there's many problems around that at the moment. So these would be solutions like compatibilizers uh, or or also antioxidants, just to give more stability and to to enable them to open up a bit their processing window. But it's not you know actually curing the disease in a sense. Uh, that that you know you, you don't improve the recycling process. You just upgrade and kick a little bit, boost a little bit the the, the low quality PCR. But still, well, there will be more low quality PCR coming in. So the vitamin, on the other hand, is really what I just talked about: is this design for recycling solution. So meaning, how can we actually from the beginning on put the right additive package into a uh, into a polymer so that it keeps healthy and strong over many many cycles? And that's also what we use the cycle works for. So we have a lab environment where we just turn the wheel like five, six times. And the more, the often you actually recycle, the more heat histories you accumulate with the polymer and you really see how it degrades. And here we can then bring the right packages of additives, which actually help to make a product recyclable again and again and again. Okay. And have there been any surprises along the way? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, many, probably. And maybe the, the, the biggest insight we had actually is when we started, we were still in this, let's say, old-fashioned R&D mentality. I develop one product that solves the problem, uh, which is normally the case when you start an innovation project. Saying, I want to develop a solution to this problem. Mm. But we realize now that it's actually impossible. There is no magic bullet to solve uh, recycling issues because the PCR is always so different depending on what kind of waste stream is used that you every time a, a recycler comes to us with a problem it's different of course there's some certain products we can recommend and we have a certain portfolio by now and we will increase that portfolio like a building block concept but here it's more about building a formulation competency, understanding where really the problem is. Is it stabilization? Is it compatibilization? Is it capturing something from the, from the PCR, getting something out of it? Um, and every time it's different. So you will never have this one uh, recycling additive that solves all problems. It's, it will not exist. Uh, so that's the reason why we also shifted a bit our view on this topic and said, okay, what we need is actually a broader scope of materials, of, of performance additives, which can actually um, help recyclers or converters uh, in the different situations to solve them. And can you give some um, kind of specific examples of how the data could be used in the real world? Mm. I think it's it, it, this data accumulation is very important huh? because when we started, we were starting from zero. So we were not recyclers. We were master batches. We knew about additives, but not about the recycling process. And we see uh, we, we aggregate a lot of data, especially when you run this multiple re recycling loops. So it's, it's actually fascinating. Um, sometimes you're even surprised that the polymer is not degrading if you start from a virgin polymer. Uh, but then you see as soon as you have a mix with other polymers, then you catalyze and you initiate actually degradation. And with this data, of course, we are building on this data on, on a day-to-day -day basis. We are increasing it to get more knowledge. But um, for us, it's also important to share this data also uh, in our industry groups where we're working. So we just are about to join also Recyclas. We are a very active member in the Alliance to End Plastic Waste, where we also discuss and, and this base data, I think it's very important for the industry to share it. Of course, every company will have their own proprietary data about what kind of additive works. So that's a different story. But just seeing how a polymer degrades and what are the influences in the process and how to actually fix that, that's important that we all work together. 
Otherwise, if we're still sitting in our ivory towers, we will probably never be able to solve this recycling challenge which we have ahead of us. So therefore, what we do with the data, we try to share with value chain partnerships. We work together with, with converters, but also with machine producers, with raw material producers, additive producers, uh, and, and really try to find the right partnerships to, to be more powerful in solving the problems. Fantastic. And on that note, um, and this is my, my concluding question, um, what are the next steps for the project? Um, <clears throat> so, first of all, we will continue building on, on our knowledge. We will try to um, broaden the scope of our, let's say, uh, reach of our additive performance uh, in compatibilization and stabilization, but also in color, how to manage color in the recycling process, how to maybe even give a prediction what kind of colors are possible based on a gray starting material. You know, normally the PCR is grayish and people say, yeah, but it's gray. I can't make a nice yellow anymore. Yeah, maybe, but you cannot even achieve a lot of other colors. And we are working on something that actually helps customers to design based on a PCR. Um, and, and we are also um, trying to integrate more labs inside of Aviant into the CycleWorks activity. At the moment, it's this one unit, and we're re working very closely with our, let's say, uh, R&D colleagues, also based in the UK. But we want to use more labs all around the world in this CycleWorks scope, actually, to bring together the knowledge also from different regions. We're very European-focused, but recycling is a global issue. So we really want to broaden the reach of this activity and and be very close to customers, especially recyclers, to help them actually to improve. Fantastic. Um, Jan, it's been a pleasure speaking to you this morning. Thank you very much for uh, making time to chat with me. And um, we'll look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Thanks, David. It was a pleasure.